Hi, this is Jesse Liberty. Today we're going to take a look at the RADMAST input control for validation. RADMAST input is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suite for .NET and XAML development. MAST input data validation logic is contained in the view model. We find invalid data through throwing an exception and that exception is turned into an error message through the binding mechanism. We can also use regular expressions to provide fine-tuned validation. Let's begin in Visual Studio by creating a new project. Name the project radmaskinput.validation. Say OK and accept Silverlight 5. Say OK. And when the Telerik configuration wizard comes up, we're going to have it add a reference to input and all the dependencies on input, which will include controls. With that ready to go, we want to take a look at data binding for validation. And so the first thing that we're going to need to do is to create a new class, which will act as the view model for our class and provide validation logic. So let's call that validation view model, add that to the project, and have that derive from view model base. View model base is provided by Telerik under the Telerik.windows.controls namespace. Let's take a quick cleanup here by going to just code and refactor and then have it organize remove any of the usings we don't need, add any usings that we don't have that we do need. First thing we're going to do is add some private member values for various types. So we'll have dub a double type, which will be called double value, a string type, which will be called string value. Then we'll also add decimal value, and we will add date time value. With those in place, let's add the public property for double value. Notice what it is doing is on the get simply returning the double value but on the set it's checking using business logic that the value falls within a range that we want and if not it's throwing a validation exception in order for validation exception to work you're going to need to add a reference so scroll down in the references So you come to System Component Model Data Annotations. Add a reference to that and then don't forget to add your using statement for validation exception. If the value is outside of our limits, we're going to throw validation exception. Otherwise, we're going to do the normal property thing of assigning the value and calling on property changed. Let's do the same thing with decimal value. And with decimal value, we're going to call validation exception if it's outside the range of negative 100 to positive 100. Let's create our public property for date time value, which will be considered to be out of range if the date is before 1900 or after 2099. And finally, for our string value, we're going to consider it to be invalid if its length is greater than 6. With our VM in place, let's turn to mainpage.xaml, give ourselves a little bit more room, remove the grid, and let's replace it with a stack panel. We'll name that layout root, and we'll give that a background of white. With our outer stack panel in place, we're ready to add a masked numeric input. Let's give that a name and set up its width and margin to position it appropriately. We're going to set the error message and notice for error message we're binding the path is equal to text and we're binding to an element whose name is custom error message. Our input behavior is insert. It can be insert or replace. And you can toggle between those at runtime with the insert key. And very important, we're going to set the value to bind to double value and notify on validation error and validates on exceptions. Both are set to true. And you'll remember that if the value is not valid,
then it throws an exception. This will turn that exception into an error message and will notify the user with that error. Very similar to what we just built, we can add a currency input that's going to correspond to our decimal value. We can add a mass date time input that will correspond to our date time value. And finally, we'll put an input for the text value, which you'll remember will be considered invalid if it has more than six characters. Let's go to the code behind and set the data context for the binding that we just created. We'll clean up the usings and then come down to the constructor and set the data context. And we set that to the data validation view model, that is to the class that we just created. Let's go ahead and run that without debugging. Our controls come up and you will notice when I enter 15 we're fine. At 150 we get an error message saying that the value is outside of the limits. Similarly on the currency, if I put in a value that's too high, I get an error message that it's outside of the limits. Let's go down to the date. I'll start entering a date. It's going to tell me that I'm outside the limits because I'm in year 001. But if I set that to 1901, the error message goes away. Finally, we come down to the string. And as I enter characters, that's three, four, five, six characters. On the seventh, we get the error message. So we see that our validation is working with a binding against the view model and the view model containing the rules for the validation, throwing the exception when it is out of the valid range and being picked up by our control and turned into an error message. Let's start another project and take a look at validation with regular expressions. So we'll call this rad masked input dot regular expressions. We'll say that it's a Silverlight 5 application. And once again, we're going to add a reference to controls dot input, which will bring along Telerik dot windows dot controls. Let's add a class again to act as our view model, masked input view model. Let's have that derive from view model base. Notice the red squiggly lines. We're going to go to just refactor, come down to organize and add missing usings. That will take out the ones that are not needed and it will add, in this case, Telerik Windows controls, which is needed for view model base. We'll add a private member variable email, which we will initialize to username at email.com. Then we will add a public property corresponding to our private member variable. The getter just returns the value. The setter checks to make sure that the value that's being passed in is different from the value we already have. And assuming that it is, it sets email to the value that was passed in and calls on property changed as you would expect. What's different here is that we're going to annotate the email property with a regular expression and that is the regular expression for a valid email address and notice the second argument is the error message that we want displayed if we don't have a valid email address. Let's go over and add a reference as we had to earlier to system dot component model dot data annotations and that will allow us to add a using statement which will make the regular expression annotation valid. We'll save that, come over to our main page. First thing we need to do in our main page is to create a new name space which we will name VM and have that point to this application. Now let's make a little bit of room and put in the data context that we'll be using for our data binding. And that data context will use the VM namespace and then that will take us to mask input view model.
the class we just created. We're now ready to come down to our grid layout route. Let's set the background on our grid to be white. We'll create an outer stack panel. Then we'll create an inner stack panel whose orientation is horizontal. And drop in a text block to enter as a label and a rad mask text input whose value will bind path equal email and mode equal two way. With that binding in place and the regular expression testing validation, we're ready to run the application. Just before we run the application, let's give a margin of 50 on the stack panel to give ourselves a little more room. And now we can delete the name that was there and start to type a name. And notice it says it's invalid until it sees that at foo dot and at least co if not com. As soon as it has a valid email address, the error message goes away. So I hope that you have seen how easy it is to do data validation using the RAD mask input controls. For Telerik, this is Jesse Liberty. I look forward to talking with you again very soon.